Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining the ATP Live for today. My name is Timulalatus Nerebake. Um, our topic for today is child abuse. Please call on family and friends, share on your wall and all. Let, let us all learn together and discuss this morning on child abuse. Remember, this live is just going to be for one hour. It's just going to be for one hour. So let's let's make this count. Um, good morning, Ada Kolo. I can see you've joined us. Good morning to you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, remember the way this runs. Our uh, guest speaker. It's gonna do an overview first, then we can start dropping our questions. And please, please, please let the questions be on the topic. Today's topic is child abuse, child abuse, child abuse. So please, any other question outside child abuse in the duration of this ATP Live, please post to the group wall. Our moderators and professionals will be there to attend to those questions. For questions for child abuse, as long as the period of this ATP Live is on, you can drop them here and we'll do our best to attend to everything. Are we all ready? Okay, I see, I see our number of viewers have increased. As usual, call friends and family, let us all learn together. I'd like to welcome our speaker for today, Dr. Gwimisola Boyedi. Dr. Gwimisola, you're welcome, ma'am. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here again. It's been quite a while we have ATP life because we've been quite busy on active pediatricians yeah. uh, trying to do our uh, children's yeah. medical outreaches. And so that has taken so much of our time. But we're so excited to be back again. And so thank you so much for joining us this morning. And like Tommy said, please share the video. You can also um ask your questions preferably <laughs> strictly on the topic of the day uh, which is very very important to any pediatrician of course and to any parents i can imagine so please share the video and invite your friends and family to join us and feel free to ask your questions it's a pleasure to be with you once again this beautiful saturday morning okay all right thank you doctor Yes, ma'am. So we can start, ma'am. Our numbers of viewers are increasing already. So give us an overview on the topic, ma'am. Okay. So uh, this morning we're talking about such a child abuse, and I just want to start by giving us what is child, what's the definition of child abuse. Uh, you know, we can use so many technical jargons and all that, but the most important thing is that anything that is done to children, that is will impair the, those children's uh, well-being or that is going to affect these children you know especially by people that have power or people that have um, authority over them that is what we call an abuse uh, because we know that children are vulnerable and um, they are still growing and so when people could be parents could be adults could be anybody uh, do anything to children in a way that will impair them, in a way that will affect their well-being, in a way that will affect their welfare. Um, that is what we call abuse. And there are different kind of abuse. So I just want to offer, give us that uh, a definition first. So anything done to children, any behavior, anything directed towards a child that endangers them, that puts them at risk of harm, or uh, impairs their physical and emotional well health and development. That is abuse. And, you know, so I hope that is clear yes, for us to understand. Yeah, and there are different kind of uh, abuse. When we talk about abuse, um, we talk about it could be physical abuse, which is what most of us are quite familiar with. So we talk about physical abuse where uh, either people, the children are beaten, in anger that you know you lift mark we've seen people who uh, you know use blades or, or things on children and left mark on their body i mean mm -hmm. i've seen lots of pictures i'm sure most of you have seen so, some of those pictures as well and um, you see uh these children they are 
they, 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 I mean, you've seen women putting high on to, to uh, uh, and, and creating marks on the body of children, or the big children to the extent that all their bodies are full of wounds and all that, or the people use cigarettes to create to punch yes. and, mm. and, yeah, and burn children. So, those are what we call uh child abuse and you know that is physical abuse and there are lots of them that can happen another one is sexual abuse which some of us are also familiar with any child below the age of uh, consent uh, which really from one country to another but any child basically being exploited and there are different kind of sexual abuse it, it may not necessarily be penetrative sex but any form of exposure for example making children to watch pornography or making them to fund or funding them or you know, fingering them all those kind of things they are abuse of children and that's sexual abuse that's another major one but the, uh, the one that is most common that most, many people don't often see and many people don't often know is that emotional abuse or neglect emotional abuse is when you tell your children dangerous negative words when you make them feel like they cannot amount to anything mm -hmm. and see a lot of parents doing this and they don't even see it as anything big deal and yes yeah, it's a form of uh, abuse as well so anything like that 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 are directed towards children is also an abuse so when you 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 tell children even though they, whether they're your own children or whether they are children that for some for circumstances, for uh, some reasons, are staying in your place or under your care, and you direct negative words to them, you know, it's also a form of abuse. Another one is neglect. You see children, not, you see parents not giving their children food, you know, children coming up with malnutrition, neglected because they're not getting enough food, or, you know, all the all the children's uh, basic well being, things that children need, food shelter clothings and even love and all that when you will meet to give it to them that is neglect and it's also one of the common uh, form of abuse that sometimes people tend to not see you see children coming to school looking so dirty they've not had the bath you see their fingernails dirty you know you see them looking unhappy and all that it's, it's because they've been neglected maybe the mother has gone out you know partying some people leave their children at home nobody to look after them we call them large key children you know those kind of things are also form of abuse another one that is common in our own environment which many people also don't tend to count but which is a form of abuse is child labor children should be below the age of 15 cannot work so when you uh see children and you are um you you some of our some cultures in our nation especially in nigeria you employ children that are five years old six years old as your house help as your housemate it's a it's a it's child abuse because those children cannot work and when even whether it's a parent that gave them to you or whatever what is it when you make children to walk on the streets children that are 10 years old six years old well, there's a place for children to help their parents but there's a place where it's an abuse so the children don't go to school they don't do anything then that's an abuse so these are all the various form of child abuse and we as uh, ask the pediatricians we frown and we say no to child abuse we don't want any child to be abused and it is our responsibility as pediatricians and it's our responsibility as parents to make sure that we don't um, allow children to be abused and so that's what we're talking about this today. today okay all right thank you very much doctor um i believe we've all heard what abuse is and we all understand it now um Doctor, so how, how 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 do we how do we prevent abuse? Um, how do we prevent abuse? Because yeah, before before I go into that, I just want to offer give some examples. So because sometimes people don't know what it means for a child to be abused, abused. or what is it is is an abuse as well. So so you see, um, I've mentioned some of this one when I was giving some definition, but I also want to go into details. Or what constitutes abuse, you know. So um, we talk about the physical abuse, and in this slide that I'm showing, you can see some of the things that will constitute uh, physical uh -huh. abuse of children. Okay. You know, so whenever you do things and you that leave marks on the body of children, it's an abuse. I know some of you will say, "Oh, the child is stealing. I want to teach them a lesson. The child is doing this." And you no. Know, even though uh, the law of the land in Nigeria, for example, allows you to discipline your children reasonably, 
reasonably is the word. You should not discipline them to the extent of leaving marks on the body. And the discipline should be with love. So but by the time you say you're disciplining a child or you're correcting a child and you're leaving marks on this body of that child, bruises, or you're leaving born. Some people say the child has still let's put their hands in fire. That's abuse. Mm. You know, or some people will eat children in a extent that children will suffer fractures. In fact, some others always boast of it that I will beat you to the extent that you will land in your hospital. Mm-hmm. And they think it's something nice to say, or oh, you know, but that is actually abuse. And there are some people that deliberately injure their children. There are some people that they really want their children. They they they, they don't assume the children are they are not even doing it maybe because they are correcting children. They deliberately injure children, and that is also a form of abuse. So this is what all those are all form of physical abuse that we've talked about. Then there's also the sexual abuse itself. Uh, I don't know whether you can see some of this thing. There's what we call grooming. You see some people, they'll be buying kids for children and they're trying to make these children to become, to um, become friendly. Like them, and, friendly yeah. yes. and then yeah. they begin to put fear in the ass of these children and they begin to make them feel like, oh, um, um, uh, you know, if you tell them anything, you know, yeah, if you tell your mommy or if you tell your daddy, then uh, uh, you are going to die. They know they put fears in the heart of these children and all that. Or some people would touch the children, or some people will expose children to their own nakedness, or they will make ch- they will force children to watch uh, pornographic uh, movies or things like that. Those are all form of grooming the children ready. And so we see cases, cases even these things sometimes are perpetrated by. Uh, people that know the child, most of, in fact, most cases of abuse, especially uh, child sexual abuse, they are perpetrated by people whom the child knows very well. People who are close to the family. Even sometimes you see fathers abusing their own daughters. You see uncles, some of you that have boys in, living in your house who are teenagers, and you have young late girls. You have to be very careful with them because some of them they are the ones that abuses children. So. Most of the time, even you know, sometimes the mothers are aware, and they also uh, they just want to oosh oosh the whole thing. So we see a lot of these things going on, in, and, and it's not only the girls, even the boys. All your house up, some of the house up, they rape the boys that they have been they are taking care of, mm-hmm. and so these are all sort of abuse going on in form of sexual abuse, and the neglect one is so common especially in places where there's a high level of poverty. And there's another kind of neglect that I'm beginning to see now by those of us who are professional mothers. You know, you wake up in the morning. Some mothers don't know their children anymore. They wake up at three. They are out of the house before the children are awake. By the time they are back, the children are asleep. It's a neglect because there's emotional neglect. You're, even though you give them all the money, you give them all the uh, toys and everything. So the children are being raised completely by households with, with people who are not even uh, up to your own standard. They're the one raising your children for you. So it's a form of neglect, it's a form of abuse. So we really need to balance these things up. So, and of course, the emotional one where you tell children awful words, negative words, which the children tend to absorb. And this one is even so bad. And in every form of uh, all the abuse, in every form of whether physical or sexual neglect, there's always a form of emotional abuse. And unfortunately, it's the one that is so eating. Nobody says it, but it's something that has lifelong impacts on the children. So these are all the various form of um, abuse that we we can uh, we, we 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 tend to say okay. that thanks to God. You know, so I will just go on to how do number one the, the first way to prevent abuse is for us to be aware of abuse, to be aware. And to know that we, has, uh, as a country, most of the countries, including Nigeria, we've signed what we call the Child Rights Act. Children have rights. Okay. Even though they look so young and so vulnerable, they have rights. And we have people like pediatricians, the police force, and the family courts, and all that that helps to maintain that these children's rights are maintained. You know, another form of uh, uh, abuse is the is there's also some, some medical abuse. Like there's a case that I will mention uh, where parents will say they would deny their children treatment, they would deny their children immunization. It's actually against the law. The fact that you believe that these children should not have this and all that, you know. The law now is like the children should have rights to life. They shouldn't have rights to life. So if medical treatment or immunization will help that child to keep being alive, you have as a parent, you have no rights 
to deny that child of the, of that right. So, and these are some of it's also a form of abuse as well when you don't allow children to get access to life saving uh, okay. treatments and all that. Yeah. So this is basically um, uh, all form of abuse and. The, the first thing we need to do is to be aware because some parents don't even know that when they beat their children so bad or when the child is kept with you or if you that you are having um a a five-year-old as your house up some of them some people don't even know that it's a, it's a form of abuse you know so when i see people telling me i have a little girl who is helping me to take care of my baby i just laugh how can that little girl take care of your own baby? She's a child as well. So it's a form of abuse. So we really need to make sure that we are aware. And this is one of the reasons why we on ATP, we are taking this topic up and let's see, creating the awareness so people to know. And uh, so we, we, awareness is very important. And for parents also be alert. Even sometimes you may not be the one perpetrating the abuse, but we all owe our children the responsibility to keep them safe. We all need to keep our children safe. And that includes you, the neighbor, includes everyone. And even your own house, you need to be sure that abuse is not going on under your nose and you are not aware. A lot of children have been abused. A lot of children are being raped under their mother's noses in the house. So you need to be alert. You need to be very alert. So if you have little girls and you have a teenage boy as your house up or as your driver, or, you need to be alert. Some of you just trust your children to, to drive us, to take them to school and train them. But we've seen cases where children have been kidnapped. We've seen cases where children have been abused by such people that you entrusted your children with. Some of us in many countries of the world, advanced countries, they do what we call uh, check. On anybody who work with children, they go through what we call check, whether doctors, teachers, and we, we, they check them to make sure that they don't have, they've not in, uh, done uh, any form of abuse in the past, or they have tendency to to be sexual predators and all that. So they will call sometimes in the UK they call it DPS check and all that. It's very very important because, but in Nigeria people don't go through those checks. They, you just anybody just come. I want to work. I want to be teaching. I want to be a lesson teacher. Le, uh, statistics are you know most girls are abused by the so-called lesson teachers, music teachers. These are people that you leave your children with and you let them and you will be there and or you will just be somewhere. And yeah, those are the people that tend to perpetrate these hearts. Even in the churches at times it happens. So we need to be aware of whoever is with our children at every point in time. We need to know them. We need to be sure that there are people who are not sexual predators we are not people that are going to abuse our children so we really need to be sure of that number one you need to make sure you yourself you are not an abuser number two you need to make sure that you you know the people that work with your children even the schools they should be checking their staff there was a case of a, a school going on that say one of these teachers have been children. we never heard what come out of that case. In most schools, most of them don't check their staff to know whether they can do that. And we think it's a way Edmaster was abusing two year olds, three year olds, you know, in, in Lagos. If you just Google it, you will see all this all these stories. And these are things that should not be happening. And so we need to be aware. And we also need to when you when a child comes and tell you something that suggests abuse, please don't shut them up. Because that's what most of us do. We just say, oh, shut up. You are saying nonsense. No. You don't need to have evidence that that child has been abused. That The fact that the child has opened up to tell you, you must learn to take it very seriously. Because most times, children actually don't talk about it. So when the child talks, then you don't shut them up because they will never talk again. They will just keep it to themselves. Because already most of abusers would have threaten them not to talk. So oh. when they talk and you now shut them up, then the children don't talk again. So just you need to just be aware and then you need to report to the right authority. And even in Nigeria now, we're beginning to have some NGOs coming up, you know, working on this area of child abuse and you can talk to them. You can also report to the police. You can also report to the social welfare, the Ministry of Social Welfare and all that. Those are the people that are supposed now to to take it up. So don't, I was so happy when sometimes when I see people uh, reporting maybe a child who is being physically abused. 
then somebody will go and will tip off the police and the police will come and that there's also in lagos what they call the office of the public defender if you you can just go anonymously report in those kind of places and they will take it up to come and investigate and all and now we've seen some cases like that and so that is very very yes. good we are beginning to have that so don't think oh uh, uh, they will think it's me no you don't have to they don't even have to know you are the one if you, if you see a child who is being abused, you also need to be part of that child rescue. Because mm -hmm. the next thing, the child may be dead. If, mm -hmm. we, if you see it and you don't have on it, the next thing, the child will be dead. You know, and all this abuse includes all those girls that have been trafficked out of the country for, uh, in, in the guise of looking for better, going abroad and all that, and then they end up being abused as well. So, but let's see focus on the ones at home today. So these are things that is all our responsibilities as adults to make sure that our children are safe. We have to keep our children safe. All right. Thank you very much, Doctor. You're that was that was that was a very elaborate overview. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Um, um, dear viewers, please, your question should be on the main video, not the watch party. Um, on yeah. the main video, we need to be able to see your questions. Moderators, please help and copy questions from all the watch parties down here so we can attend to them, please. Mm. Help us do that. Um, I think I think I saw one question on the watch party. Mm. Uh, she was asking the when should parents stop dressing up in front of their children? Okay, so um, I don't even think it's appropriate for parents to dress in front of their children at all. So, but then of course, maybe you have a little baby and of course you have to dress and all that. Okay, that's fine. But I think by the time the children are about like age of two or thereabout, you should stop doing that. And I think that's about the age where we expect you to start teaching them what we call child um, sexuality education. We need to start early. And when we talk about sexuality education, some parents always get it wrong. They always think when we talk about sexuality education, we're talking about teaching children sex and all that. No. Sexuality education is not about sex only. It is fact, that's about what, a, a minute part of it. The beginning part of it is that we should... Okay, I think somebody has posted the question now. Question, okay. Yeah, the most important thing is that we should um, start telling children about their body. They should know their body. And you should let them know that they have their private parts and they have their uh, public parts. And you should let them know, you should use the correct names for those body. I mean, for those private parts of the body. So you tell them about the uh, their vulva, their vagina, tell them about the breasts, tell them about the... Um, the pennies and all that don't use uh, don't use names that are not uh appropriate but sometimes those are the ways these people tend to get so let them be comfortable talking to you about their private part and you cannot tell them that those parts of the body that are covered by their pants and their vests that is a very easy way when each time they are putting on their pants and the vest you can tell them those are the parts of the body that are private parts and those parts of the body should be always covered and then nobody should touch them there mm -hmm. and when anybody touch them there they need to let you know okay so those are the things those are simple simple things you can tell me so i actually use the uh pants acronym uh private parts are privates um then uh, what is the a now i'm i'm going to forget some of those things and then um you can always uh, no, say no, any for no. I remember the alias, any for no. So no, you must always say nobody's allowed to touch you in your private part. And then S is for speak up. You know, anytime anybody do anything, if they, they, they don't keep secrets. You must separate children that they should not keep secrets or they should always tell you any secrets that upsets them. Because sometimes that's what the abuser always to say, this is our secrets, our secrets. And yet the child knows that this secret is upsetting them. So you should must always tell children that they should tell you whatever secret is upsetting them. You know, so yeah, you must tell them that their body belongs to them. Their body is it belongs there. So nobody is allowed to touch their body. So we have all these things on our page on our way so you if you go to have, we have a video on how yes. to tell children about preventing child abuse we have the pants acronym we have all those things as well so those are the things that you sh we should be start teaching our children 
early. The focus of the sexuality education in in in, in the in the focus of the sexuality education in the uh, in the beginning is about preventing child abuse. It has the focus. That has the focus at that point in time. It's not about uh, whether the child should get pregnant or not and all that. No, that's not the focus. The focus at that point is we don't want the child to get, uh, yes. Okay, so I, rem I remember the pants now. So P for stands for privates and privates. Always tell children that the parts of the body that is covered by their uh pants and the vest are private parts and those parts are private which means that nobody is allowed to be seeing that part nobody's allowed to be touching that part and you also as parents you also need to make sure you also are not doing the same thing then a stands for always remember your body belongs to you always remember your body belongs to you and n is for no 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 means no you should always tell them no means no. so anybody wants to talk so touch their body, you tell them no, and no means no. And then T stands for talk about the secrets. Any secret that upsets the children, they should talk about it. Don't be afraid. And then S means speak up, somebody can help you. So those are the acronym for PANS, and those are the things children should know. From two years old, you should teach them PANS. And as they're putting on their PANS every morning, let them run through P, A. N, C, S. Yes. Let them talk about it. Privates are privates. Always remember your body belongs to you. No means no. So when somebody wants to touch their private parts, teach your children to say no. no. Anybody wants to touch them, wear their vest and their pants is covering, they should say no. And then no means no. And then you should always tell them, don't tell children to keep secrets. Tell them to always tell you. Anybody ask them to keep a secret, they must tell your parents. Tell them that those secrets are things that they must be shared by parents. Parents must know every secret. So no uncle or auntie should tell them we will keep something a secret because those are the ways abusers tend to get children. They say this will remain our own secrets. But tell children, okay, there's nothing wrong with having secrets, but you must always tell your parents all the secrets. It's very, very important. So that way the child would have told the parents, oh, auntie said we should do this and it's, this is our secret, you know? And then you must always tell your children to speak up. They can speak to their teacher, they can speak to anybody about whatever is upsetting them. So it's very, very important that we teach our children some of these simple acronyms. So I so back to the question, please don't, I think we should stop dressing in front of children by the time they're about two. Okay. Yeah. All right, ma'am. Um, um, another question is here from Aisha Aruno. How, how will I know my child has been sexually abused? Well, that question is difficult to answer for you as a parent. You number one, you can't know yourself. And um, even for all those of us who are professionals, it's not all the time that we're sure. Remember what I talked about, ch child abuse is not just only uh, when the child has had any form of penetration or anything. The fact the child has been exposed to um, and the fact that the child has been exposed to maybe movies that are inappropriate and all those and, so, and this also boils down to some of us that watch some of these home videos at home that some of these home videos these days they are becoming more of pornography you see them showing these scenes you know so that's why they have all those ratings the rating 18 14 g for uh, pg and all that when they say pg it means you need to watch those movies with your children because there are some things that you may need to explain to them. So G is something anybody can watch, children can watch it. So but please, so things, they will say some are 13, it means that only children who are 13 and above can watch them. Some are 18, only children who are had, only had those should watch them. So those kind of, those ratings are very important for you as parents. So, so please make sure your children are not exposed to some of those things, because that's where some of them begin to see some of those things and they begin to practice them as well. No, so how do you know where a child has been sexually abused? There are many, there are uh, giveaways, some giveaway signs. For example, mm -hmm. when a child begins to act sexualized, you know, you see children, you know, for some children, they would, because they don't know, the children don't know there's anything, that thing is wrong. So you see the children acting it out. So you can see a child just going to kiss a other or always want to cling to a male or, or always uh, depicting sexual uh, behavior, you know, then you mean that that child may have been uh, abused. So sometimes children have recurrent infections, vaginitis. So that's why I always tell parents, anytime they ask me a question about the child who is always having vaginal discharge, especially when it is recurrent. 
we must always rule out sexual abuse. Sometimes the children also can disclose it as well. They will just tell you, uncle, this is in touch me here, or he did this, this person. Don't say, oh, he's talking nonsense. Better take it very seriously. So those are some of the, but those are like giveaway signs. But the way to confirm it is that the doctor, the doctor that are trained in examining children, in they can examine their private parts, and that's the only way they can confirm. Sometimes, we, even when they examine the private parts, we, we are not so sure. Sometimes it is when the child has a sexually transmitted infections that we will now know, that, because there's no way a child will get sexually transmitted infection if the child has not been abused, or if a child gets pregnant. So sometimes that's the only way we will know. So that is why sometimes for us as professionals, we always take the disclosure by a child seriously. In other words, if a child tells us, we take it seriously. We don't just assume because we can't see any signs. If a child has disclosed an abuse, you must believe them and you must you must take it seriously because that may be the only evidence that you have. Oh. So uh, back to Aisha, if you if you don't see any of the signs I've mentioned and you're worried, please take the child to see a pediatrician, a doctor who can help you uh, examine the child and tell you what is likely maybe the, who can confirm for you yeah all right thank you doctor um Oladoku Anuluakwa is asking what are the costs prevent uh oh please please we are we are treating child abuse today child abuse today any question outside child abuse please post on the yeah. Google. Uh, sure like like doctors, it, please it. keep note all questions outside child abuse shouldn't be copied down here let them post on the group wall moderators and professionals are there Solan Jungosta, your question should go on the group wall, not this ATP live, please. Not this ATP live, please. Um, yes. Um, are there other questions? Are there other questions? We have any other why, questions. Are people, why are people not asking questions today? Yeah, because I guess most people don't have questions about child abuse, abuse. generally speaking, oh. <laughs> because it's not something, but it's just the fact that we need to be aware. And uh, we need to uh, change our ways. If you are an abuser, please repent. If you are not an abuser, yeah. if you know a child who is being abused, please speak up. Speak up, because it's so it's amazing. Sometimes when children when children eventually uh, you know when the kids eventually come up to the open, it's amazing how many people have seen that child. How many people have had the suspicion, but nobody ever speak. Nobody ever speak up, and at the end of the day, that's why the child end up becoming. There's a case in U.S. recently that that I read in the papers, and this child eventually died. You know, this child was neglected. This child was being chained uh, to the bathtub, and you know, the the because parents have been separated. The mother is not even aware. The father has remarried. And this child was not being given food. By the time they took the child to the hospital, the child was severely malnourished. The child showed signs of neglect. The child showed signs of uh, being um, chained down and all that. And the child died, you know. So eventually, of course, the parents, the two parents have been accused, have been arrested and facing the wrath of the law. But, but, but bottom line is the father many people would have seen their child and they, they ignored and they didn't act on the the kilo come you know that our attitude of what's mm. my business in when it comes to children it is all our business yes it is your business it is my business it is everybody's business because you may be the only lifeline for that child. child and if you fail that child you're not going to forgive yourself so please please don't it, it, there's nothing wrong with saying oh i don't know let me not go and say what i don't know no just talk you know ask the professional you don't need to ask you don't need to investigate you don't need to do anything you don't even need to talk to the parents just go and tell the authorities and then they will act on it and i'm also making a passionate plea for those of you who have children as your household, please, sisters, can you please return those children? I know some of you will say, yes, so I am going to train the child in school. And then you will put the children in another school. Your own children will be going to find school. school. And then, yeah, your, then the time your own, those, your own children are studying, that child will be running up and down, running errands for your own children. That is not right. That's, if you know you can, you remember the case of this girl that died in Benway? You remember that girl? Uh, what her name now? Then everybody now said talking after the child has died. The child that was being abused and all that. You know, the case was so much in the news that that time. You know, so 
it, 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 everybody was talking about the child as that, but many people saw that child when she was going through all that. And so please, 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 you really need to take, you really need to uh, to be alert. And when we see people, children, who, are, who you suspect abuse, please report. Let's not wait until the children are dead and everybody is now making, we now want to trend on the topic. Please. I, don't, I personally, I don't, I don't buy into that. I think we should act when we have the when, when we have the chance yeah let's, let's yeah. do it in time okay um aisha is asking again how can i convince uh a parent to take the child for checkup because she keeps telling me her private is paining her uh, if a child complains her private is paining her i guess that is not you that's somebody you know you, you you have to tell the parent i mean i don't yeah you should tell them there's not the other way you can convince them than to tell them and that is it is their responsibility now to, to to take the children to the hospital and all that. Your own part is to tell them there's something you can do. And if you think they are not doing the right thing or you suspect anything is going on, please report to the local authorities. Report to the social welfare service. Tell them there's somebody else who have the opportunity or the way to. But it's better to tell the parent first. But if you are thinking there's something else going on, then you should. Do it in a nice way. Just let me let just go to the hospital. Let just go and check this thing, you know, that kind of a thing. Government hospital, preferably, and let them check the child for you. So you please, if you need to do that, it may not necessarily be the child has been abused, of course. It may be the child has other things, vaginitis, which could be from infection from the pants and all that. So those are the kind of um, things that we can uh, do it. Um, Lola Flabi is asking, um, what age should dads stop dating their children or uh, their daughters? <laughs> there, there, okay, I know this was a trending news of uh, the time in Nigeria. <laughs> but it, it's, it's not about daddy blessing their children that is the issue. Uh, uh, it's just that we all need to be allowed. So we, women also abuse children. We yes. also do that. So it's not men that abuse. Women also abuse as well. So, it's, and it's not every man that's a monster. I know that, of course, maybe when we talk about sexual abuse, men are like maybe 90% of them are men, but that doesn't mean that all men are monsters. So we are very good dads. So we have some single fathers, of, of course, who don't even have their wife with them. Maybe the mother is late or something and they've not remarried. Are you going to say that they should not have their daughters to have their baths and all that. So the issue is just to make sure that the child is not being abused. So for me, as long as the girl, like children, I think children from the age of seven, they should start being able to uh, have their own baths by themselves. But below that age, the father can assist. And it is not the father birthing the child that should um, cause the child to be abused, really, no. Most people that get aroused by children or that they are the, uh, what we call pedophiles. It is only pedophiles that will see a five or seven year old and they will feel like abusing that you know most of them have men it's a mental health problem really they need to get themselves checked up so it is not a issue per se with the father birthing the children so let's let just it's, so we can what basically we can give a law and say if you are so, 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 hey, don't do <laughs> don't, don't yeah. take your child if you are if you show this man is like that then you as a mother take up responsibility most mothers you know your husband if you know your husband is a kind that can do that then mm. take responsibility but if you know your 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 husband is not that kind of side then you really don't really need to uh, worry about this yeah all right, thank you, Doctor. Um, next question is from Esosa Mary. At what age should we start educating our kids about sex? So I've answered that question, Heli. I heard from 18 months, sexuality education, not sex education, sexuality education, because sexuality education is not just about sex education. You know, sexuality education is about the totality of their being. And so starting from 18 months, you start telling them about their body parts. You start telling them about um letting them just know their body parts. That's all you do. But then they're about two, three years old, you begin to tell them about understanding 
their private parts separate from the rest of their body parts, what is a good touch, what is a bad touch, those kind of things. There are a lot of resources online on how you can go about it. So you can't teach them that. But by the time they are a little bit older, then you start teaching them about hygiene and all that. Then when they are about uh, puberty, you start teaching them about uh, menstruation, about all those things. Then you start thinking about things like say, sexually transmitted infection about uh that's when you can start talking about sex because sometimes babies children work to how the babies how our babies formed and things like that you start getting into more details so you don't know you start telling them right from time about 18 months but you are building up on that information mm -hmm. so by the time they're teenagers they should know everything and they should know how to protect themselves and things like that and i think them to understand the importance of keeping themselves sexually and you know the responsibility that comes with early sexual debut for example you know sexual transmitted infections or wanted pregnancies and all that of course you don't want them you want them to focus their energy on their school on their academics and all that and letting them know that their sex is good there's nothing wrong with sex don't make it sound like sex is a bad thing but that there's a time for everything so when they are when they are ready, when they are ready to take responsibility for having babies and they have gotten a, a, a committed person relationship, someone that they love, that they really want to share the rest of their life with, then that's the time to have the sexual relationship. So you just need to children to understand this and don't hide things from them because yes. they are going to hear you from their um, friends. Their, peers at school and they are going to give them the wrong information. So mm. the better they hear the right information from you, who, the, who, who is a um, parent who really loves them um, as well. So I hope that's answer your question. All right, thank you, Doctor. Um, Our next question is from Gift Okpara. Please, how can one handle a seven-year-old girl that likes hugging everyone, including males in the compound, school, church, etc.? No, that, that is actually inappropriate. It's actually inappropriate for a, a, a for any child at all, not even seven year old. It's actually inappropriate for any child at all to be hugging everyone, you know? So you need to let, these are things you need to teach children. Number one, she shouldn't even be hugging strangers. So I, come, I'm, I find it very ridiculous that the child wants to hug everyone. You know, she they should let her know there are people to hug. We reserve hugs and all those kind of affection from close family members, parents and family member, grannies and all that. So you shouldn't allow your seven year old to be number one to hug everyone. That is even inappropriate to start with. So if the child is doing that all the time, then you also need to make sure the child doesn't have another developmental difficulties going on. Because I know some children who can do that. That is actually overboard. So children should have some boundaries. Which, which is one of the responsibilities of parents is to create boundaries for our children. We must create boundaries for our children. So boundaries means uh you don't uh your ox the ox for children should be reserved only for close family members and some parents due to you create that difficulties for your children i see parents kissing their children on the lips lips to lips it's actually wrong because you, you it, it, it is not something to be done you can pet children on the side of their mouth but kissing them on the lips and all that is it, not really really appropriate and this sometimes even from Get mothers to the boys, and you know, it's not really appropriate. So, you need to let them know. And these are some of the things. So, you get your seven year old and tell them, let's hug family members. There are things you do with people that are close to you, like family members, and there are things you do with people that are not. So, for people that are not so close as family members, you can just greet them. There are ways to greet people respectfully without necessarily hugging them. Yes, and so because I don't understand why a seven year old wants to hug all the meals using your in the compound school church all the meals I I, I found that very, very because the seven year old is already becoming aware of their own body so you need to call the seven year old and let the seven year old know that look you shouldn't let you serve this hug for only daddy mommy especially family members really and all that so. But that kind of a child is a high risk for those who are predators. And you know what? There are predators everywhere. There are predators everywhere. Most of those males in those compounds in the church and all that, some of them are sexual predators. So you don't want your child. So that child already is, a, is one of those ones that can easily be targeted for such the evil behavior. So you don't want that child to, to, to do. And please always make sure your children are in your custody. 
And while I'm at this, let me quickly chip in. I read on the say WhatsApp or somewhere of a child, somebody who went to church, and somebody said, okay, quickly bring the child. I bring to go and give my offering and come back. And before she came back, the child has gone. Please, hmm. you, you, we must, I, I just found something so ridiculous that we do. There's on no occasion should you leave a child with a stranger. Don't see if it doesn't matter who the person is, whether it's in a church or it's anywhere. You never, never leave your children with strangers. And please, our churches, can we make sure that we, we register children? And when children are handed over to us at church, we take them, we, we, we register them. And we don't release them to anybody except their parents. And the children should never leave our, our, no, sometimes we, we are so very careless. We are so very carefree with the children. We think everybody is nice. And that is why they are taking advantage of us, those of us in the church. You think everybody who comes to church has come to worship God. Some people have come to kidnap children. Some people have come to steal children. So mm -hmm. please, churches that don't do that, please start doing it. If you are having 10 children given to you for children church, let, make sure you know who deliver the children and make sure you hand over the children back to the parents. And parents, stop giving your children to other children to take care of you while you are busy going up and down. And then, no, take care of your children. And don't give your children to strangers to hold for you. Why can't the stranger go and give their own offering? Not everybody who is in church is a good person. That's another trick that people are using these days to kidnap children. So please, we really need to make sure that we, we pay attention to some of these uh, things. Thank you. All right, thank you, Doctor. Thank you, thank you for that extra bit. Um, Omotoka Miriam is asking, what are the int to notice in an abused child? Okay, we've mentioned some of them before. Yes. So physical abuse, we talk about sexual abuse, and we talk about emotional abuse, neglect, and all that. So um, physical abuse, when you see unexplained injuries, unexplained marks on a child, or uh, a child who is always in and out of accident and emergency, you know, or a child who is unhappy, a child who is not ha who is not smiling, or for children who have been neglected, you see them when they go to school, you see them stealing food. When children steal things like that, sometimes it's not because they are just stealing. Some of them have been neglected, so that means they're not eating. You see them stealing food, or you know, don't understand those things. That's a sign of neglect. You see children thinking, uh saying negative things about themselves that, oh, I can't amount to this, I can't amount to this. These are children that have been emotionally abused. Or you see a child who is acting sexualized. You see them, you know, talking sexual sexual language. Or you see them acting in a funny way, you know. Or you see them touching their private parts. Or you see them walking in, a, in an abnormal way. Or you see them being excessively close to the male gender, like if it's a girl or the other way around. You know, look at sensor signs of abuse. You know, and when you say that, you should be a lot. A lot. You do something about it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, doctor. Um, so, please, if you're just joining, um, I'll, I'll recommend you just wait and, and let's, because some of these questions, we already addressed them um, earlier. Um, E.J. Samson is asking, what best way can we give a two-year-old child education. Okay, I think I've answered that question like three times now. So what I'll do is that for those of you who are just joined, like Tommy said, you maybe you should just join us. You should watch the video again at the end of it so that you you hand, answer. And again, if you go to our, our page, after this page where you are watching this video now, or even our group, just search for, we have a, a very short video on how to go about sexualist education. We have like a and if you go in our file section, we have files like a little booklet that talks about details of how what you teach a two-year-old, what you teach a three-year-old, and things like that. So we have everything there, and you can read it and you can use it. So those are things that will help you, you know. Yeah. Okay, Aisha is saying I just learned not to kiss my baby on the lips. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Apart from friends, I also you also give him. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's some infection that are transmitted through through kisses and all that as well. So that's a good one to learn. Um, Ate Dolapo, okay. Ate Dolapo says, when you have a clear case of child abuse, which may lead to death, but you keep getting warning from people around not to do anything because it's a case of witches and wizards, what can one do? No, you can't just assume, you can do a lot. You can't just assume it's witches and wizards. Have you people seen all those children that were neglected in the uh, Aquai Bob? 
that yes. we are as witches and we said, have you seen what the old lady i've forgotten the name of their foundation now they took those children and mm. they rehabilitated them if you see those children even those people that were calling them witches and wizards i'm sure they will be they will be shocked I mean, for crying out loud, how can you be labeling small children which is a wizard? You know, so please, if you see those cases, please go and report to the authorities. Go and report to the social services. If you let us know which part of the country you are, we can. For example, if you are from that part of the country where they always do that, that particular foundation is very good. They help those children. They rehabilitate. I saw one of those children's picture. I couldn't believe it. The child is so happy, so trans. So all the all children needs love. Children needs food. Children needs they work. Will children need, they will try. The all these ones we are not taking care of our children. They will blame all our all our own uh, economic frustration. We will start blaming it on the children. You know, if you bring up your children in a good place, they've, they've done studies that if you take a set of twins that are very very good. And you know they have the same gene, maybe what we call monozygotic gene. And you go and raise one in one part of the state. I won't mention names now. And you raise one in another part of the state that is very posh, very a, a, a very good area, good road, good education, good everything, good food, and all that. And you go and raise the child in another, maybe a slum and all that. We found that, that the children turn out this differently. Of course, the children who go to the uh, urban area where they turn out better. What are children who are raised up in slum? They, are, they turn out to be hairier boys. And what are the other ones who turn out to be professionals? So it is it's the environment also has a role to play. These are two children with the same genetic makeup. So they, they have almost the same genes. So it is not about genes. So environment also matters. So most of those children that are being branded as wishes and wizards, it's because the parents have economic frustration because of where we are. Mm. And they want to blame somebody and they want to blame little children that are not suffering. So those children have been rescued now. If you look at them, I'm very doing well, doing thriving well. So please, uh, I did the last point. It's your responsibility to go and report to the social welfare service. There's a ministry of youth and social welfare, or women, youth, and ministry. They call them different names, but they are all in all the states, and that is their job. So you can go there as an anonymous person. In Lagos, I know we have the Office of the Public Defender. You can go and report there. You don't even need to tell them who you are. You don't even need to just go and give the name and the address and say, this is what I observe. They will go and do the research and they will rescue that child if needs be. So just do your own part. You don't even need to tell anybody. And you can do it anonymously. You know, I so do the you've heard from the doctor. Please, yeah. please don't keep this to yourself. Yeah, you may be the lifesaver for that don't child. Don't keep this to yourself. Please report to the authorities. And for others that are also listening, please, if you have any case of child abuse in your vicinity, please don't keep it to yourself. Be that voice that helps that child. Hmm. Report the authority anonymously, anyhow you want to do it. Make that call, make that report, please. Blessing Egbo is asking, what do you think should be the first step in helping an abused child? So it depends on what kind of abuse it is. So for example, the first thing is to make sure the child is safe from the abuser. And most mistake that most people make is to go and confront the abuser. You are only going to make the child's life worse because the abuser can remove the child from that environment. They can go to another place or they can change their taxes or they can actually uh, create a, a barrier that you won't be able to even see the child anymore. So the first thing is not to is, is to make sure that this child is safe. And in, in some countries, they have very clear call what we call safeguarding procedures, what you should do. And everybody has to do that safeguarding. Anybody who sees children, it doesn't matter who you are, even if you are the cleaner in a place and you see the children come to use that service, you must do the safeguarding course. But in Nigeria, we don't have that for now. But what you can do is to report it reports and abuse also to see report it we have lots of agencies that do all sorts of ngos that do some support so you just go with it and report it report to the nigerian police as well they have a, a section for that as well so report it to the social welfare ministry they also can do that so just get it sorted just make sure you don't do nothing if it's something that you can do something about of course you can intervene but the first thing is to make sure that whoever can help that child is informed and if you are not in that position then get the authorities involved to do it so we've already made measure of the name maybe what i'll do is at the end of the same uh the, i can put it up on our group on different names and address phone numbers of all those agencies that are uh that can help if you have a child with sexual abuse we can we can put that up and maybe hopefully that will help us all right thank you doctor um, um okay i think our last our last question for today um Nusirat 
Foluka is asking, how can I get your book? The one for one, for two to three years. Oh, I think she's talking about the yeah. file. Yeah, it's not my book, but we have it. We have it. It's a booklet anyway, but it's available on our file section. If you go to our our group, Ask the Pediatricians group uh, on Facebook. If you go to Facebook and you go to Ask the Pediatrician, once you land into our group, go to the file section or just search using child abuse or something. It will bring out the files that you can download it. You can even just go on, you can also just go on Google and you will see it as well. There are lots of resources, a lot of materials that can help you on how to uh, prevent child abuse and how to do sexuality education. There are some by the, uh, what they call it, uh, focus on the family, very lovely ones. So there are lots of resources online there. And there are some by the UK and, and NSPCC and all that. Just Google how to talk to children about sexuality education, how to prevent abuse. Just you will see a lot of free resources that will teach you how to go about it. Okay. Um. Thank you very much, Doctor. Um. Titi Lokwe Adebusola is asking if a child has repeatedly experienced abuse and is afraid to talk because she once told her mom, and her mom didn't believe her. How do you make the child talk? I don't understand who is asking this question. So is it the mom now or is it the a, a, a next person? In other words, it's difficult for me to say because if the mom has if a child has talked and mom doesn't believe, so is it that the child talked to you as a separate person or what? Anyway, the, the important thing is not to make the child talk. The important thing is to get the child safe. You understand? So if if it is the mom, because I'm not so sure who I'm talking to now. <laughs> In what capacity the, you are asking the question, whether you are the mom or you are a friend of the mom or something like that. If the child has make a disclosure before, so if it's the mom, please believe the child and investigate. And I and, and think mothers are really need to beg all of you because you are the ones that tend to do this. Oh, okay. Actually, she's, she's, she's the child. When she was once a child, that's what happened to her. So she just wants to learn about it now. Oh, okay. So, okay, for children, we also have a lifeline for children to call. Thank God these days we have uh, phone phones everywhere. And what we normally tell children is that talk to a trusted adult. So if your mom doesn't believe you, talk to your teacher, talk to your pastor, talk to somebody. Just speak up. That is the ex. Speak up. Somebody is going to believe you. You may think that your mom doesn't believe you. That does not mean there are... Oh my goodness, so sorry about that, uh, Princess Cecilia. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. But what I'm saying is that um, your mom may not have believed you, but next time, speak to any other person else. Speak to a teacher, speak to a doctor, speak to church, men, fat men, church uh, your church members. Speak to somebody, just speak to anybody. Somebody is going to believe you. I know the mothers are very uh, guilty and you're all sitting on this table this morning. If you are one of those mothers, please, you can see what somebody is sharing her own uh, personal life story now. So her mom didn't believe her. And uh, obviously, thank God, I think you've overcome that. I hope so, so sorry. But what I'm trying to say is that when any time a child make a disclosure, please take it serious. Don't shut down the they child. Don't shut them down because they may never do it again. They may never talk to you again. And if you and don't promise them you're not going to tell anybody. That's another thing. Because mm. when you, yes, because most time when children want to tell you, they want to tell you in confidence. So I'm um, sometimes children will make you promise that if I tell you, you won't tell anybody else. Never ever promise a child that you're not going to tell anybody else. Just tell the child, thank you for telling me this, but I cannot promise you. That I'm not going to tell anybody else, but I'm only going to tell do only those who are going to help you. Help. You know, those who are going to support. I won't tell anybody who don't need to know, but I may need to tell maybe people that need to know so that we can get to help. Most children will be happy; they they are often okay with that. But don't promise because children like once you promise a child something and you fail to keep your promise, then they're not going to tell that's you. Another thing. That's another thing. They lose their trust in you. So please talk to somebody else. And in, in most part of the world, there are lifelines for parent, for children to call. You can even call the police lifeline, the 911 that people call. In Nigeria, I think it's, it's 767 or... Yeah, no, that's, that's Lagos, 767. Yes, you can call any of those lines. And there's a, some foundations too now. They have that lifeline for abuse. There's a Mirabel Center in Lassus. They have those lifelines. Those are places you can call. 
you can call you can even just stop a policeman and tell him you can't just talk to somebody else who will now and i hope if they talk to you as an adult you will take it up and you won't shut them down mm. you you if you don't even know what to do at least report it to the the, the right authorities who will be able to you know help the child so i hope that helps all right, thank so you. Me, don't stop disbelieving, don't disbelieve your children when they stop doing something. Please take it up, act on it. Don't protect your husband as against your children. We do that a lot. The those of you from my Yoruba tribe, <laughs> we do that a lot. We need uh, let's let's bury it in the family, you know, that kind of thing. You know, it's wrong, it's wrong. We are we are we are we are. We are perpetrating abuse. Perpetrators also are guilty. Yes. If the, if the court finds you that you know and you cover the abuse, you are also guilty. You are as guilty as the person that yeah, committed the crime. I mean, you, sorry, you are not the perpetrator, but you are the one that is also protecting. Yeah, 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 an accomplice. Yeah, accomplice. Thank you. You are also guilty as well. So this morning, as an advocate for children, as I that I hear, I'm a pediatrician, and we are children advocates. Well, sometimes our children can talk, and we are their voices. And that this morning, I'm begging you: we want our children to be safe. We want them to live in a safe world. We want them to be safe. We want them to be happy. And we trust in you as our adults, daddies, mommies, uncles, aunties, to keep our children safe. Please don't do anything that will impair our children again the message this month today is not a day for long talk today the only message i'm saying is, please let's talk abuse of our children whether it's physical abuse whether it's sexual abuse whether it's emotional abuse whether it's neglect whether it's child labor whether it's child sexual exploitation please stop abuse of children thank you all right thank you very much doctor thank you thank you so much for that session um, I, I know we didn't have many questions today, but I believe that all the, because we had quite a number of viewers, I believe you guys have learned one or two things. And of course, whatever knowledge you get from here, please share with family and friends. That's, that's the way we, we keep on passing this knowledge and we keep, um, we, we share this knowledge with everybody connected to us and we have a sinner society. So please, please, please let's make this, um, Let's let's push this knowledge that we've gained today. Let's push it out. Don't just keep it to yourself. And of course, any sign of abuse that you notice, please speak out and let the authorities be aware. Um, join us again next week for another session of ATP Live, 10 a.m. Nigerian time as usual. Um, I'm Tomila Lactosin Eribake. Thank you, Tomila. Thank you yeah, so much. Final word, yeah, final word, just to say that this program has been brought to you by Ask the Pediatricians Foundation. Um, we are a foundation that is committed to the welfare of our children. So uh, you can, we appreciate if you can support us. And uh, um, yeah, so uh we do community medical outreaches and we just completed our children's day community medical outreaches and we'll still be doing more and there are lots of activities coming up for the rest of the year so if you go to our facebook group if you have more questions because most people always have questions after, after watching. watching yes yeah so please just go to our facebook group you can ask your questions there I'll ask your questions there moderators and professionals will attend to you Yes, and you can also get to our website on www.axipediatricianspanish.com. The details are also on your screen already. You can check us on our page. I'm very soon we're going to have you have and have where you can yes. also check out your questions about from HCP. So uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning and have a wonderful uh, Saturday. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.